All We Have Is Now is mostly about urgency. I was writing the song thinking, we don't have a lot of time here on Earth. We don't know how much time we have. And there's, there's a person that I want to be with and be spending my time with, and they're not, they're not around right now. They're somewhere else, and we're wasting another night apart. We don't know how many more nights we have left. I'm Garrett, I am the lead singer and I play piano and a little bit of guitar. I'm the sad romantic that everybody has to cheer up all the time. <laughs> That's what I bring personally. I'm the sensitive one. I'm the <laughs> yeah. My name is Matt, I play bass and drums for the Modern Electric. I play a real heavy hand on everything that is designed with the band as far as the elm art. Um, our website, our stage set, these lamps for example. My name is Holden and I play guitar. My role as a guitarist is to kind of come in, listen to what everybody else is doing and fill in the gaps, figure out what the song needs and uh, round it out. I'm Michael and I play drums in the band. I generally feel good most of the time and I'm lucky to have it. So I'm kind of the guy that brings back the mood, you know? Feeling good, feeling good about life, writing music, having fun, you know? what it's about. I think there's something for everybody to enjoy here um, without sounding too all over the place. Um, there is a kind of cohesive vibe throughout all the songs that are generally kind of cinematic, and, uh, very melodic, very hook driven. We've had fans tell us that they're quoting our lyrics to each other during a breakup, you know, things like yeah. that. So that yeah. people are really connecting to the to the music, the words, and getting the, the meaning behind it. I could see us being a soundtrack to like a coming of age film where, where the main characters are a group of friends chasing crushes, surviving loneliness, all those type of things. I've grown to love the music and, and love the feeling I get from all the songs and I love playing them, I love screaming them when we play it live, it's, it's, it's awesome. I love the whole process. The Modern Electric is an experience, yeah, it, like our stage show especially, we, we spent a lot of effort in crafting our stage show sonically as well as visually, like having good peaks and valleys and interesting things to look at. And, uh, things that reference film and cinema. Uh, there's something special about creating music with other people. You get this special bond that, uh, especially playing live, uh, it's one of the most fulfilling experiences I have. And uh, it's a chance to do something permanent uh, that's greater than myself and uh, that has the ability to affect people in a larger way. Music for me, I've I've used it to communicate to people I love. That's its main function in my life. Uh, before I before I was writing songs and I was a kid, I would make mixtapes, and like I would make a mixtape for a girl I had a crush on at school or for, for a best friend. Later on in life, when I learned how to write songs and got into playing piano and guitar and singing, I was able to just translate that whole process. Most of the songs I I can pick a movie that we watched uh, together as a band and that movie, the feeling we got from that movie turned into a song on the album. I have a list of like my top 10 favorite Woody Allen films, um, Annie Hall being number one on that list. It's usually like Stephen King dramas that make me want to play music. Like the Shawshank Redemption and the Green Mile. There's something about them that inspires me to create. Movies like uh... Anything that John Hughes directs, um, it's kind of like the feeling I got when I was in high school. Uh, there's a few movies that inspire me to play music. They're normally really sad, though. No, I don't want to say that. <laughs> Just because they're kind of like chick flicks. So, I don't know if like things like The Notebook kind of like make me want to play. It's, it's kind of weird, but I mean, that's the truth. We'd never worked with a producer before, but this album we decided to go with one, and uh, we picked Mike McCarthy, who'd worked with Spoon, one of my favorite bands. We were really lucky to work in a studio. We recorded everything analog on two-inch tape, 
like it was in the 70s, and I think just sonically, the sound sounds a lot more honest. Well, the, the cool thing about this album, as opposed to the last one, is we took a couple years in between to develop the material, and so we were playing it out all the time, uh, figuring out what worked, what didn't work in front of a live audience. We kind of grew together, you know, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't the modern electric to begin with. We, we had to grow into that and what it's become. The connection we have with our audience is really special. It seems to be genuine. <laughs> so um, that's the real joy and I hope I can just continue. My goal is to just first to move people and to affect people with the music, somehow enhance and change their lives. But practically, I would just love to be able to make a good enough living to where we can keep doing it as long as we want to keep doing it. I'm, I'm hoping that we can write an album or um, write songs that, that people can you know, use as a soundtrack to their lives. It'd be great if some kid, his, his prom song or the song he listened to in the car on the way to homecoming or, you know, or a first kiss song, that would be amazing. If, if our song was a soundtrack to someone's first kiss or something. Uh, so yeah, I, that's what I'm hoping we could do, just make music that can soundtrack people's lives. Funny.